need faith in God to negotiate life. Why? Because life is full of challenges. Make God so great. Good God. That's what make him great. He made us alive. You didn't deserve it. You didn't earn it. But he decided out of his love, he made us alive with Christ. Welcome to the live stream Wednesday night Bible study of Covenant Church International with our pastor, Apostle P. Ronald Wilder. This stream is coming to you directly from our sanctuary located at 5407 Old Springville Road in the city of Clay, Alabama. That's located right along the outskirts of the great city of Birmingham, Alabama. We are so delighted that you have joined us tonight. Thank you for allowing us to be a part of your spiritual growth and development. You are in for a treat tonight as our apostle ministers the life-changing word of God. Also, remember, this live stream will replay on tomorrow, Thursday night at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on our Covenant Church International Facebook page. And now, for the word of God for tonight, our apostle, Pastor P. Ronald Wilder. Well, bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And welcome tonight to the live stream Bible study of Covenant Church International. This live stream Bible study is emanating from our sanctuary located at 5407 Old Springville Road. That is here in Clay, Alabama, right on the outskirts of the great city of Birmingham, Alabama. I am so grateful that you have joined us tonight, amen, to allow us to be a part of your spiritual growth and spiritual development. And after a long day of busyness and all the things you have to do with work and traffic and dealing with people, you get to wind it down by sitting around the word of God today, and amen. And of all the great ministries that you can pop up on on social media, thank you for choosing us. I trust that we'll be faithful tonight to discharge the duties that's assigned to us tonight, assigned to me, and that it will be a blessing to you. The word of God will bless you. Now listen, do me a couple of favors. Number one, if you have not liked us on Facebook, please like us, Covenant Church International. And if you have not Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please do that. Uh, our YouTube channel is Covenant Church International Birmingham. You have to put the Birmingham there. Go there and subscribe. In either way, when you subscribe on YouTube or when you follow us on Facebook, you get a notification anytime that we go live. And also on YouTube, you'll have access to the archives of messages taught here at this pulpit. You can go back. Uh, several years in their services and ministries and uh, guest speakers and uh, all of that. So you'll have access to that. So please subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's the first thing I need you to do. Second thing I want you to do is to share this live stream. Amen. Hit your share button. Take out, you know, you're watching me on a phone or iPad, but hit the share button. Share it on your timeline. Tag your friends. Amen. It's our desire that we will spread the web of this live stream far and wide, and we can do that if we can get you to help us, and you can help us by via of sharing the live stream. Well, I'm excited about the Word of God that I'm, we're teaching on the six things that the devil cannot do, and so let's get directly into the Word of God right now. Let's pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your goodness and kindness. I thank you tonight for your tender mercies. Now, Lord, I declare that this is the day that you have made, and we're going to rejoice, and we're going to be glad in it. Now, as I prepare to minister this, your word, your precious word, to these, your precious people, I ask you in the name of Jesus to open the ears of our understanding and make the word of God clear. Let revelation flow through me unhindered and uninterrupted in the name of Jesus. Use my tongue tonight as the pen of a ready writer. Think your thoughts through my mind. Speak your words through my mouth. Give your people ears to hear and hearts to receive and a mind to comprehend. 
Let the word of God tonight be broken in bite-sized pieces that all may feed from it and be nourished in the things of God. Lord, I declare that the birds of prey will not steal one seed of the word sown here tonight. But I thank you, Lord, that the word shall take root on good ground and produce fruit in the lives of all the hearers tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. We've been talking about six things that the devil cannot do. Been on this for quite a minute. And we have covered the first three things. So let's, let's, let's review. Before I give you my scripture, let's look at the first three uh, things of the six that the devil cannot do. The first thing we covered that the devil cannot do is the devil cannot penetrate the blood of Jesus. The devil cannot penetrate the blood of Jesus. The second thing that the devil cannot do is the devil cannot harm you if you have on the armor of God. The third thing that the devil cannot do is he cannot read your mind. He cannot know your faults, but he can know what you say. We dealt with that last week. Now tonight, we want to jump into the fourth thing that the devil cannot do. Number four, the devil cannot cast himself out. The devil cannot cast himself out. Whatever territory is claimed by the devil right now in your life will stay claimed by the devil unless you act against it. Let's say that again. That's very powerful. The fourth thing that the devil cannot do is he cannot cast himself out. He just can't. We're going to show you a scripture on that in just a moment. He cannot cast himself out. Whatever, this is a key point, very important. Whatever territory is claimed by the devil in your life will stay claimed by the devil unless you act against it. In other words, whatever territory the devil got in your life, he's going to keep. He's not going to just walk away. He's not going to just get tired. It doesn't work like that. Whatever territory you claim will stay claimed by him unless you, the believer, act against it. Now, let's look at our foundation scripture tonight for this particular teaching. Again, one more time, the devil cannot cast himself out. That's the fourth thing of the six things that the devil cannot do. And the side note to that is whatever territory claimed by the devil in your life right now will stay claimed by the devil unless you act against it. Foundation scripture, Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. And verse number 29. It says, or else, how can one enter into a strong man's house? How can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he first bind the strong man, and he would then spoil his house. Again, King James, how else can one enter a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he first bind the strong man, then he would spoil his house? New Living Translation. For who is powerful enough to enter into the house of a strong man like Satan 
and plunder his goods. Only someone even stronger, someone who, someone who could tie him up and then plunder his house. So what the scripture is telling us here in Matthew, the text in Matthew chapter 29, is that the only way to take the spoils of a strong man is someone stronger got to go in and bind him up. Someone more powerful. And so it says what it says there in our text, in our title, the devil can't cast himself out. Whatever territory he has in your life, he going to stay claim to until you act against it. In other words, he is a strong man. The devil is a strong man. And so whatever territory he's claimed in your life, he going to lake, he going to stay claim to till you act against it. In other words, he's not going to just get mad or tired or bored and just walk away and leave you alone. He's not going to surrender the claim in your life involuntarily. I mean, voluntarily. He's not going to say, I've had you bound long enough. I've had you sick long enough. I've had you broke long enough. I've had you depressed long enough. I've had you angry long enough. I've had you in a funk long enough. He is not going to say that and say, okay, now I'm going to leave you alone. That is not how it works. He is not going to say, I've messed up your marriage enough. I'm going to just leave you all alone. I've messed up your life enough. I'm going to just leave you alone. No, he doesn't work like that. You have to bind the strong man and take back your spoils. He's not going to feel sorry for you. He's not going to have mercy. He's not going to be touched in his spirit. He's not going to find a soft spot for you. Doesn't work like that. He is merciless. He is feelingless. Are you listening to me? So, he's not going to cast himself out. You have got to act against him. And the only reason why things have not changed for you yet is because you haven't acted against it. Either you don't know how to act against it, you're suffering from lack of knowledge, you're suffering, you're suffering from, from ignorance to, to pay the price to do what needs to be done, or you've just gotten satisfied with it. You, 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 you've grown accustomed to it. So it's a part of your regimen now. You're used to it. Are you listening to me? So, you got to understand how Satan functions. Let's just help. Now, I know I'm not, you know, I'm going to talk about him for a few minutes. I don't even want you to get the idea I'm glorifying the devil. I'm just teaching the, what the scriptures teach about him. The Bible says that we are not ignorant of, of his devices. Okay? So, we're not going to be ignorant of his devices. You're not going to be ignorant of his devices. So I'm just making you aware of how he functions so you can know what you got to do. Satan's number one desire, listen to me carefully, understand the words coming out of my mouth. Satan's number one desire is to jack up your life so bad and to make you as miserable as possible. That's his number one desire. To jack up your life as a believer or anybody, but more so believers, to jack up your life and make you as miserable as possible. And sad to say, there may be people watching me right now that say, well, he has been successful with me. My life is jacked up and I'm miserable. Well, that may be your testimony. Don't have to stay your testimony. You can make a change. Because he ain't, again, he ain't going to feel sorry for you. You know, he ain't going to stop. Remember the movie Terminator? The, especially the original Terminator? Schwarzenegger, they told him, he ain't going to stop. He, 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 whatever, he, that's where the devil, he, he's not going to stop. He's not going to take a break. He 
he's not going to give you a, a season of relief. Doesn't work like that. He's the original Terminator. He's going to keep coming and keep coming and keep coming and keep coming. Well, uh, Apostle Wilder, what am I supposed to do? You're supposed to resist him and resist him and resist him and keep on resisting him. You're supposed to take authority and take authority and take authority and keep on taking authority. You're supposed to rebuke him and rebuke him and rebuke him and keep on rebuking him. You just, you just respond to him. Huh? It's, called a, it's, called, it's called a law of reciprocal. He throws something at you, you throw something back at him. So, are you listening to me? So understand, let's look at some scriptures. His desire is to jack your life up and make it as miserable as possible. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. Look at it, see what it says, what it says to us. Let's let the scriptures talk to us for a moment. 1 Peter chapter 5. Peter admonishes the church to be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, as a roaring lion, walketh about doing what? Seeking whom he may devour. Look at what he's doing. He's walking about as a roaring lion, like a lion roars for prey. He is roaring like a lion, as a lion. Didn't say he was a lion. He's not a lion. The only lion is the lion of the tribe of Judah, but he tries to act like a lion. But he walketh about seeking whom? Not whom he may can befriend. Not who he can fellowship with or become a companion with. He's seeking whom he may destroy. Satan knows but one word, and that's devour and destroy. That's all he knows. So he's walking about. Now, again, just because he's walking about don't mean he can devour me or destroy me because greater he that's in me than he that's in the world, okay? Understand your position. See, don't, don't let these scriptures scare you or frighten you when you know your position. So I can read them all day. He can walk around. He can walk circles around me. I don't care. But he can't bother me. Because I know the greater one lives in me. He can fight me. He can bring temptation against me. He can do things in my life. He can create conflict. He can create opposition. He can do all he want to do. And when he do what he going to do, I'm going to do what I do. Pray. Fast. Believe God. Confess. Call things that be not. Rebuke him. Take authority over him. Resist him. Every action he brings, it brings a reaction from me. Come on, talk to me, somebody. I feel the power in here tonight. Hallelujah. Huh? See, that's what you got to remember. No matter what reaction he brings, whatever action he brings, you got to give it an equal and more powerful reaction. Somebody say reaction. Type that down in the chat room. Reaction. Are you listening to me? In the comments, reaction. You got to give a reaction. That's the main problem that some of you face it. You are not reacting. He's acting, but you're not reacting. You fold, you, 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 you fold up in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a defensive posture to not get hit. React. You got to react. Look at somebody and say react. Hallelujah. You're dead in your home, on your job. You say, I got to react. He walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Job chapter 1 and verse 7. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence cometh thou? Let me give you the background right quick. The sons of God had went to present them. So well, go back up. Let's just read it. Let me let read it. Go back. I'm sorry, Mark, Deacon Mark. Go back up to verse 6. Let's see if 6 will give me what I want. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's, that's just fine. Now, there was a day when the sons of God, now anytime you see the word sons of God in the Old Testament, it's speaking of angels. It's not talking about men. Sonship pertaining to men with dealing with God is a New Testament, New Covenant phenomenon, okay? In the Old Covenant, men were called the servants of God. They were not the sons of God because sonship could not come because Jesus had not yet died, paved the way, defeated Satan and all that stuff, okay? So they couldn't be the sons of God. They were the servants of God. But in the old covenant, angels were called the sons of God. When you see the sons of God, it's speaking of the angelic hosts, the angelic beings, okay? So there was a day when the sons of God or the angels of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Satan came also among them. Why? Because he was an angel. He was the highest ranking angel at one time. He was the anointed cherub that covered him. He was over all those guys. So he went with them when they went to present themselves. This was, this was probably something that was, that was done on a normal basis. Angels presented themselves. Even while he was in, his, in, his, in, in favor of God, he probably saw angels come and present themselves. So this was, this was, this was something normally done. And even after he failed, he still had access to heaven. So he goes to present himself. When the sons of God would present themselves, he went also. And notice God did not rebuke him. God did not cast him out. He was an angel. And God recognized him for who he used to be. Let's go further. And Satan came among them. Verse 7. And the Lord said to Satan, Whence cometh thou? And look what Satan said. And Satan answered at the Lord and said, Going from going to and fro in the earth, walking up and down in it. Put that together with Peter. He was walking up and down the earth, seeking who he can devour. Okay. That's what he does. He's not been walking up and down here, and he hasn't stopped doing this. Although this was written, this right here was written thousands of years ago, probably, probably seven, six, seven thousand years ago. Matter of fact, if you look chronologically, Job is the oldest book in the Bible. I know you thought Genesis was written first, but Job is older than Genesis. Jo Job is the oldest book in terms of writings. And it's very possible that Job lived in the early part of creation, probably somewhere, you know, somewhere between uh, uh, Cain and Abel and long before we got to Noah, in that arena, in that time. His book is the oldest book. Okay? So he's walking about. He's still doing it. He's going to and from the earth. He's walking, and notice, he's out walking up and down in it. Satan's number one priority and desire is to jack your life up and make you as miserable as possible. Let's keep reading. If we, if we, if we don't hurt, if it don't mess you up, Mark, go to verse 8. If you can. And the Lord says, Satan has now considered my servant Job. There's none like him in the earth, a perfect upright man, one that fear of God, escheweth evil. Number nine. And Satan said, Lord, do if Job fear God for naught? Hast thou made a hedge about him and his house and all that he has on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hand and the substance of the increase of his land. Put forth thy hand now and touch all that he hath, and he will curse you to your face. And the Lord says, Satan, behold, all that he has in thy power, only upon himself put forth not thy hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Stop right there. So, I mean, we're not going to get into the uh, theological uh, aspects of all this here, but the bottom line is Satan's desire was fulfilled here because over the next few moments in time to address that chapter, he made Job's life miserable. In a single day, Job goes from being the richest man in the world, one of the wealthiest men in the world, to losing seven sons and three daughters in one day, to losing all of his wealth in one day. 
And then the following day, the next time the Satan comes, he loses health. His body is broken down with balls and his friends, amen, thought he had sinned against God. And his wife told him to curse God and die. So Satan was totally successful in making Job's life miserable. That is his job. That's what he does. John 10.10. 10. St. John chapter 10 and verse 10. The thief, speaking of Satan or the devil, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life that they have it more abundant. Now stop, let me show you something. So here, here the scripture says that the thief cometh to do one of three things. Steal, kill, and destroy. So Satan comes to either kill, steal, or destroy. He's not coming to be your friend. He's not coming to hang out. He's not coming to cut covenant with you. He's coming to steal, kill, and destroy. Everything Satan does, the agenda behind it is to kill, to steal, or destroy. One of those three. Okay. If not all of them in the same thing, but definitely one of the three. Kill, steal, destroy. Now notice, that, notice what the King James Bible said. The thief cometh. You see that word cometh? Notice it doesn't say comes. It says cometh. Cometh. Anytime you see the E-T-H on the end of a word, cometh. Believeth, saith. It has the idea of continuing to do. In other words, when the Bible says, he that believeth, it means he that believes and continues to believe. Not believe one time, but he that believe and continue to believe. When the scripture says in Mark, he shall have what he saith, it didn't say what he says, what he saith. It means it saith. And continue to say. He shall have what he saith, what he continues to say. Faith cometh. Didn't say faith comes. Faith cometh. It keeps coming. It keeps coming. Huh? See, faith doesn't come one time. No, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. In other words, faith keeps coming. So when it says the thief cometh, he's saying the thief is gonna keep on coming. This is consistent with everything we read in the scriptures about him. He keeps coming. He's walking about to and fro in the earth, seeking whom he may devour. He keeps coming. The thief cometh. He keeps coming. He comes on Monday. You get the victory. You can't relax. He's coming Tuesday. He's coming Wednesday. He's coming Thursday. He may miss Friday, but he'll be there Saturday. He keeps coming. The thief cometh. He keeps coming. Why? To steal, to kill, and destroy. That's his job. He cometh. He keeps coming. He comes over and over and over. That's why you can't relax. That's why you can't be missing church and, and, getting, and getting loose from the fellowship because Satan keeps coming. He's looking for the lone sheep to wander away from the camp. He keeps coming. He came one day and you locked in. You there. Hey, I can't get to him today because they with the shepherd. But he's going to keep on coming because he, he, he want to know that day when you, when you done slipped away. And got away from the flock. He keep coming. That's why you can't afford missing and getting disconnected from the house of God. I don't know how some of y'all do it. I don't know how you do it. I don't know, I, I don't know how. He keeps coming. See, he keeps coming, but we don't keep coming. Woohoo! He keeps coming, but we don't keep coming. He cometh, but we don't cometh. We don't cometh the church. We come every now and then. He coming. We gotta come. We gotta readeth the scripture. We gotta study the scripture. We gotta prayeth. Keep on doing it. Not a one-time shot. Are y'all listening to me? He cometh. 
and he comes for a purpose. He's not coming for fellowship. He's coming to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Now, put the scripture back on the screen for, for me, Deacon Mark, for the people to see. Because I want to show you the flip side of that. Now, notice, the thief cometh, means he keep coming, because he's not successful, so he keeps coming back. The thief cometh, not but for to steal, kill, and destroy. But look what Jesus said. I am come, notice he didn't say I am cometh. I am come one time that they might have life and have it more abundantly. So, I, so Jesus is so powerful, he don't have to do like the devil. He don't have to keep coming. He came one time that we might have life. His one time, his one death, his one resurrection, his one suffering on our behalf, that one time is enough to give me life and life more abundantly and victory over all that the devil does when he cometh. Because Jesus came one time. Ooh, God Almighty. I said, I said he came one time. He ain't got to keep coming. There's enough power in his first coming. Good God from New Jerusalem. He came one time. He don't have to keep coming. He ain't got to keep dying. He ain't got to keep resurrecting. He came one time. And there's enough power and authority and glory in what he did when he first came to give us life. The God kind of life. Zoe, life till it overflows. Life to the fullness. Good God Almighty. See? So that's why you so, so that's why I say, don't be disturbed when I tell you the truth about the devil, because there's a there's a greater truth about Jesus that supersedes that. Hmm? Satan cometh, but Jesus come. Satan cometh, but Jesus came. He ain't got to come back no more. See, he, every time the devil comes, he ain't got to come down here. No, he came. Stand on my, it's just like the disciples when Jesus got in the boat. They said, hey, let's go to the other side. Let's go to the other side, y'all. He went and laid down and went to sleep. He wasn't thinking about no storm. He already put his word in action. Let's go to the other side. I don't care how bad the storm got. The boat would have made it through because Jesus said, let us go to the other side. Lord, have mercy. Woo! Good God Almighty. I need a church in here with me tonight. Hmm? Are y'all listening to me? There was enough authority in Jesus' words, let us go to the other side to take them through any storm that arose against them. There's, there's enough in Jesus coming, dying, Raising from the dead to carry us through anything that the devil come to do, to steal, to kill, and destroy. No, life is what we have. I command you to live. Woo. Command you to live. Life. The Greek word for life there is zoe. The God kind of life. It is defined as life till it overflows. Life in the absolute sense. Life in its fullness. Not just existing. Not just getting by. Not just that or do. Not happy one day down the next day up. No, living on a high of the life of God. And that don't mean that everything favorable is happening for you. Because this life is not predicated on your circumstances, God Almighty. I could be in the middle of all hell and still enjoy the Zoe life more abundantly. Because he came. He has come that I might have life. Have it more. Notice this life ain't automatic. That I might have it. You got to receive it. You got to access it. You got to take hold of it. It's not going to happen automatically. You got to take hold of it because the devil will do his job and that's do and that's to do everything he can to fight you from experiencing Zoe, the God kind of life, life more abundantly. He will fight toe and nail, hell and high water morning tonight. 
but he can't stop it if you lay a hold of it because he came for the express reason that I might have life and have it more abundantly. Are y'all listening to me? Whew, I can feel, I feel, I feel you drawing on the anointing out there in streaming land. I feel the draw. So you're pulling the anointing out. You're pulling the teaching out of me. Good God. Let's go deeper. And we'll, 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 we'll have to stop in these, after these next two scriptures and we'll, we'll pick up next week. So we just said that Satan's number one, des, number one uh, desire is to jack up your life and make you as miserable as possible. We gave you 1 Peter 5, 8. We gave Job 1, 7. And we just gave you John 10, 10. Now the next point I want to make about Satan is he is seeking entry. He is seeking entry into your life to gain your territory and steal your stuff. You know, when I came to the church tonight, I, 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 only two people here at church tonight for this live stream. That's me and Deacon Mark in the, in the, in the, in the sound room. Most Wednesdays, it's just us. Every now and then, a few folk are fluffy in and, you know, and it's okay. But on most nights, it's just us two. Some nights he beat me here. Some nights I beat him here. Tonight, I beat him here. And the building was locked. The lights were out. But I had to get, I had, I had, I had, I had to find entry into the church. The entry was the door. I pulled out the key. I put the key in the lock and I turned it and the lock came loose that was locked and the door opened and gave me entry. The key in the lock in the door gave me entry into the church. The same thing happens when Mark gets here first. He does the same thing. He pulls out the key, puts it in and gains entry into the church. And once we get in, we cut the alarm off so the police, the Jefferson County Sheriff don't come because we got an alarm event happening. Okay. It's interesting. That's how, you, that's how you enter. Well, Satan wants to enter your life and get put hold to your territory and steal your stuff. But he can't just bust in your life. He got to find an entry point. He's looking for something that is a key, something you give him as a key to give entry into your life. He's seeking it, entry into your life. Why? Because he want to gain your territory and steal your stuff because he's a thief. A thief steals. He want to steal what's rightfully yours and ultimately destroy and devour you. Let's look at Mark chapter 5. Let's look at verses 12 and 13 of Mark chapter 5. It says, now let me give it, before you put scripture on the screen, let me get a background. He had just cast the demon out of a man with a legion of demons. This man had 2,000, over thousands of demons in it. And when the devils came out, they didn't want to leave the territory. Why? Because they had entry right there. See, demons are territorial also. Satan is territorial. Once they get a lock on a territory, they want to stay there. Just like your life. Once they get a lock in a certain area of your life, they want to stay there. They'll fight tooth and nail to hold on to it. Okay? So, now, so after he cast them out, look what it says. It says, verse 12, And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. In other words, there was, some, there was a whole herd of swine or pigs nearby. And the demons besought Jesus, saying, don't send us away out the territory. Send us into the pig that we may enter them. Verse 13. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave or permission. And the unclean spirits went out. And entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. And they were about 2,000 and they were choked in the sea or they drowned. So the devils begged Jesus 
to give them an entrance ticket. Let us stay here. But in order to stay there, they had to have something to enter into. Because demons are disembodied spirits and they need a body to function in. So he run into these pigs. And the pigs run down the hill and kill themselves or drown in the ocean. Now there are, there are two schools of thought here. You know, some people, some theologians say that the, that, that the devils made the pigs run down the hill and, 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 and drown. That's very possible. You know, but why would the demons say, hey, let's go into the pigs and then, then make the pigs kill themselves? That, that's one school of thought. I don't have a problem with that. And there's another school of thought, and I don't have a problem with the next school of thought either. Another school of thought is, is that the pigs got more sense than human beings. Because the pigs said they, they ran down the hill themselves. I'd rather die than let the devil live in me. <laughs> say, man, huh? See, see, we got people walking around with the devil in them. Hmm? Oh, you listen to me, you know, and, there, and there's, a, you know, there, there's a big debate, you know, can, can a Christian, can a, can a Christian, uh, uh, have a devil? Can a Christian be demon possessed? You know, I don't believe a Christian can be demon possessed in the sense of possession. But demons can use believers and use Christians. Now you don't believe that. You go to church. Matter of fact, pastor church. You see it. You see it in full fledged action. Hmm. Amen. A Christian may not can have a devil, but a devil sure can have a Christian. Say, man, huh? Yes. Because they're seeking an entry point. They're seeking a place that they can get into your life. Let's look at Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. And let's look at verse 43. Now this scripture is going to show you what happens when Satan comes out. Because remember again, he's looking for an entry place. He's looking for entrance. So when he comes out, what happens? Look at the scripture. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, that means somebody cast him out because he ain't just leaving. He walketh through dry places, seeking rest. This is Jesus speaking. And finding none. In other words, he didn't came out the person, so he's walking around dry places looking for rest, but he can't find none. Why? Remember, they have to have a body. They are disembodied spirit. That's what a demon is. A demon is a disembodied spirit. It is a spirit who lost his body. Used to have a body, don't have one now. A disembodied spirit. So he can only express himself through a body. Are you listening to me? Hmm? That's why angels and demons are not the same thing. Angels can't possess you. Angels can't live in you because angels have a body and a body can't live in a body. That's why angels are not in us. They're with us because they got a body and a body can't live in a body. Hmm? We see in the Old Testament, angels came down and, and took on flesh and even had sex with women because angels have, have, they, they have bodies. So, so when we speak of demons, we're not talking about fallen angels because they have bodies. We're talking about disembodied spirits, spirits who lost their bodies, and they can only express themselves through a body. That's why they seek to have their body. They prefer humans. But if they can't find a human, they'll take an animal like we saw with the pigs. But they prefer human because humans give them the greatest expression, the greatest opportunity of expression. So when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. Next verse. No, 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 that's not it. Okay, here we go. Then, say, then he saith, look what he saith. He's walking about. He didn't find nothing. Look what he says. He says, then I will return into my house from which I came out. And when he has come, he finds it empty, swept, and garnished. Stop. In other words, he says, I, ain't, I don't see nothing out here. I'm going to go back where I came from. That's why when the devil comes out of you or you get free, 
You need to feel that part of you that was free with the Holy Ghost or with the, with the Lord Jesus. Say amen, huh? Because Satan is going to come back. This proves it. He come in. He comes back. This guy says, I'm going to go back. I'm in the book tonight, y'all. I am in the book. Somebody type it in the, in the, in the, in the comment. The, hop, the apostle is in the book. It's just confirmation. He said, I'm going to return. He cometh. But if you don't feel that with God, I've seen so many times people come to the church and they get free and God will set them free and they'll go back to where they came. Never commit to the house. Never commit to the church. Never commit to discipleship. Never commit their life to the Lord fully. Why is that important, P. Ronald? Why is that important, Apostle Wilder? Because the devil is coming back. I wish I can tell you he's gone forever, but he's coming back. And when he comes back, look what he says. He says, and when he has come back, he finds it empty, swept in God. In other words, the house is empty. Nobody's filled it. He don't see the Holy Ghost. He don't see Jesus. He don't see the Lord. He's it's empty and it's swept because he got out of it. It's clean. It's nice. And look what the scripture says. Next verse. Then goeth he. See, he don't just come back by himself. Then goeth he and taketh himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. Look what it says. And the last state of the man is worse than the first. Have you ever noticed when people leave God, they get saved or they come into the church, they come into the kingdom, they have an experience with God, then they go back to unrighteous living or what we call backsliding. Have you ever noticed? And I've talked to many of them and their testimony is, is, is apostle. They didn't call me apostle, I'm a pastor. I, 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 I've done things I thought I would never do. Why? Because they, if, you, if you look at them, they are worse off on the latter end than they were on the first end. Why? Because when the devil came back, he didn't come by himself. He brought seven of his friends, seven worse than himself. Hmm. And now the latter state of you is worse than him. That's why don't you ever fall away from God. Don't you ever get out the clutches of God. And, 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 and in addition to being worse than you ever had, the next thing about it is I talk to him, it's hard to get back. Sometimes they want to come back. They wish they can get back, but something because there are seven words pulling against them. Every time they get close, they all of them, it pulls them back. This is no joke, people. This is real. This is real. Hmm? And the activity of the enemy is intensifying and people falling by the wayside daily. Mad at church because somebody said something about you. You didn't quit your job. Why are you going to quit church? Why are you going to quit God? Because somebody in church was a hypocrite. You look at professional sports and athletics, they do stuff. They beat their wives. They cheat. They rob, kill folk. But you keep looking at sports. But yet one time, one little thing happened in the church, you ready to give up on God. That's how the devil plays. Because he knows that I can get you out there. Not only can I come in you, if I can get you back out there, no longer can I come in you. But I got seven partners coming with me and they worse than me. You ain't seen nothing. Wait till I bring them guys with me. And the set ladder state of that person is worse than the former state because you got instead of having one devil now you got eight and all the new seven are worse than the one you had so now you find yourself doing things going places in the stuff you never thought you would do 
because he came back and found the house empty, swept, and garnished. He cometh. The Satan cometh. He keeps coming. And what is he doing? He's killing. He's stealing. He's destroying. My time is up. We're going to pick up right here next week. I got to stop. Thank you for your time tonight. I, I wish I could go on. I want to go on. But I'm, I'm hearing the Holy Spirit say, that's enough. That's enough. Some of you listen to me. You are away from God right now. You caught up in foolishness or stupidity. Stuff that don't even matter. You know. Get yourself locked back into God and into his house. Because Satan going to keep coming. And you got to have the tools to resist, to take authority, to rebuke. Are you listening to me? Some of you know people away from God. You need to get them back. Because this is not an hour to be falling away. This is not a moment to be outside the ark of safety. Because what I'm going to show you next week is that Satan is intensifying. New spirits are being released into the earth that we haven't seen before. Things are critical. A pop Bishop Ronald Brown, Ronald E., Ronald Edward Brown, God bless his soul, he's in heaven now. He went on to be the Lord a couple of years ago. He used to sing these old songs. He has albums of them. One of them was, there's a storm out on the ocean and it's headed this way. There's a storm out on the ocean and it's headed this way. And when it get here, you better make sure you're in the ark of safety. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your word tonight. Thank you that I have been faithful tonight to my assignment. To say what you told me to say without fear and timidity, without contradiction or confusion. But to cry loud and spare not. Show your people their sins in the house of Jacob, their transgressions. Lord, help our people to see that Satan cometh, but you came. There's a contrast. He keeps coming, but you came one time. And there's enough that you've given us in your one coming to resist and stand against him, no matter how many times he comes. God, help those that are outside the ark, even those that are part of CCI, Covenant Church International, those that are under my covering, those that are members of my church, those that's in, that, that that's, that's, I'm responsible for. But they're drifting away, they're outside the ark. God, help us to reach them and pull them back in before the storm comes. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's time to get back in the ark of safety. I got someone on my mind. I got to give them that word from the Lord. It's time to get back in the ark of safety. Praise the Lord. Listen. My time is up. I want to give you an opportunity to worship the Lord in giving tonight. Whew. Several ways you can give. Number one is on our church website, www.covenantchurchintl.org forward slash donate. It's on the screen for you. That will take you directly to our online giving page. Once you get there, there are two platforms you can give on, church by mobile, PayPal. 
Second way you can give is by Cash App. A Cash App tag is popping on the screen for you right now. Dollar sign Covenant Beham. Dollar sign capital C O V E N A N T. Capital B H A M Covenant Beham. The third way you can give tonight is to put it, write a check, make it out to CCI, put it in an envelope, dress an envelope to come to church in the National P.O. Box 546, Pinson, Alabama, 35126. Drop it in the mail, put a stamp on it, we get it. Be faithful to give. Amen. God will bless you. And more than that, this is good ground. Let's make our confession tonight. As we give today's offering, we are believing the Lord for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commission, settlements, estates and inheritances, houses and automobiles, interest and income, rebates and return, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, witty inventions, fine money, bills paid off, blessings increase and bills decrease, strings of income, great expectation, possessing our inheritance. Father, bless every giver tonight. Let the seed that left their hand never leave their life. Cause it to come back to them good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Multiply their seed and increase it so they'll always be abundantly supplied, always having more than enough. In Jesus' name. Thank you for meeting every need of coming to Church International. You cause us to abound with much resources, more than what we will ever need or use. God, you're, you're, you're blessing CCI so much so that we are, our covers are running over. Because hundreds of thousands of dollars are given to this ministry. Millions. We run over. We overflow. People are generous. They're givers. This is good ground. We thank you and we trust you for supply every need. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you tonight. Hope you enjoyed the word. Go back and listen to that. It'll bless you. You know somebody need to hear this word. Somebody that's outside the ark of safety. Send it to them. Share it with them. This word need to be heard. God bless you. Don't forget Sunday morning, 10 a.m., our Sunday morning celebration. Here at Covenant Church International, you're in the Birmingham area. I want to invite you to come and celebrate with us in person for in-person worship. Not, we'll still be live streaming 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. So please join us wherever you're watching us from. God bless you. Have a good one. I'll see you on Sunday morning. May the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Now unto him that's able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless. Before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior. Be glory and majesty, dominion and power. Both now and forever. All the people of God said amen. Amen and amen. God bless you tonight. Have a good one. See you on Sunday. Booyah. Mm -hmm.